Hi and welcome to next tutorial. In today's lesson we'll learn how to recreate this cool looking flame using trap code particular. So anyways guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that we have here is we have to create a new composition in After Effects. And I'm just going to run with a 1920 by 1080 pixel document at 24 frames per second. And I probably only need about 5 seconds in terms of duration. So I'm just going to leave it at 15 for now. So I'm just going to press OK. The first thing that we need to do is we need to create a new solid and I'm just going to call this flame and I'm going to press OK. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for the effect trap code particular. Now trap code particular is not a free plugin. It is a plugin made by Red Giant so you will need to pay for this if you want to continue this tutorial. So anyways. If you have particular, we can move on. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to open up the emitter settings and we need to go to the particles. We're just going to change that to 300 seconds. The next thing that we need to do is we need to go to velocity and we're just going to change it from 100 to 120 and then we are going to change velocity random to 100%. And then we are going to change the velocity distribution to 5. Once you've done that, you can then close the emitter and open up the particle. Now, inside the particle, or well, firstly, you can see what is actually happening here. Um, once you move forward in time, you can see what is happening with trap code and you can see all this stuff coming out but anyways we're gonna make it look like a flame so we're gonna go and open up particle and we are going to change the life to 0.7 seconds we are then going to change the type to a cloudlet and you can see what's happening here as well so once you've changed it to a cloudlet then what we need to do is we need to go over to life random and we're going to change life random to 50 percent we're going to change the feather to zero and then we are going to change the size to seven and we are going to change the size random to 100 percent and then what we need to do is we need to go to size over life so we are going to open up this and then you get this little box here and basically what we are going to do is we are going to click on this tool over here and we're just going to drag some of these things down so I'm going to drag the ends down firstly just like that and I'm going to try and keep it straight or as straight as I can but basically we want to just have like a small curve that goes like that so that's pretty good so we can close that up we're going to change the opacity to 30 and then we are going to change the opacity over life but we're just going to use a preset this time and I'm just going to use this one here just like that so you can see what's happening here it's changing a bit still doesn't look like a flame but we'll get to it so I'm just going to close up the particle the next thing that we need to worry about is the physics. So now that I've opened up physics, the first thing that we need to do is we need to change the gravity to negative 1200. Once we've done that, then we need to change the physics time factor to 1.4. So I'm just going to write 1.4. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the air components. And I'm going to change a few things in here. First one is air resistance. I'm going to change that to 2 and then I'm just going to make sure that I tick the air resistance rotation and then I'm going to change the spin amplitude to 100. So once you've done that then we need to change a few things in the turbulence field. And you can see it's starting to look a little bit more like a flame but again we'll get there. So once you're in turbulence field we're going to change the effect size to 10 and we are going to change the effect position to 100 and we are going to change the scale to 0 and once we've done that that should be enough and we can close all of that and we don't need it anymore so as you can see what it looks like is something like that now we're going to add some effects to this 
So I'm just going to bring this down because I don't need 15 seconds of it. I just need about 5 seconds. So the first effect that I'm going to put on this flame is Echo. So I'm just going to search for Echo. And once you've got it, just drag it to your flame. And then what we are going to do is we are just going to change this value. But basically all I'm going to do is just remove that 3 and change it with a 0. So it will be 0 0.0033. And then just press enter. The number of echoes, I'm just going to change to 4. And that just, you know, makes it a bit more, you know, like chunky in there. The next thing that we need to do is we need to go to the echo operator and I'm just going to change that to maximum. Once you're done with that, we can close that down and we can go we can go for the next effect. So the next effect is CC vector blur. And I'm just going to drag that to the flame. Now with the CC vector blur, what we need to do is we need to change the type to direction center. We need to change the amount to 50. We need to change the angle offset. So we're just going to increase this by 80. And we also need to change the map softness to 20. And now we've got like this, you know, weird pattern with the effect, but it's starting to look more thicker like a flame. So moving on. The next thing that we need to do is we need to add a curves. So we're just going to go and type curves, add it to our list. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to the alpha value. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a simple. So I'm just going to click and drag one point there. And I'm going to do the same for the other side. So what you want to do is you want to try and create like a little S just like that. And then what we need to do is we need to then go back into our RGB values and we, we are going to do the same kind of thing. But this time I'm just going to bring this point down a little bit more and this time the point I'm just going to bring it maybe up just a bit further than the initial alpha uh, curve. So once we've done that, we can then close that off and then we can start to add some color to this flame. So I'm just going to add some tint. Now, the first thing that we need to do for the tint is we, we're just going to change this white value to a orange, an orangey kind of value. Now you can use your own colors here or you can just follow this and I'm just going to put in FFA162 and I'm just going to press OK. So once I've done that, then we can add some glow. So again, click, drag, bring your glow on top of your flame and you can already see it's starting to look a little bit nicer. So the first thing with the glow, we want to change the radius to 160. We also want to change the intensity to 2. And now what we want to do, we want to go to glow colors. We want to change them from original to A and B colors. And then we want to change the color looping. So this value here to sawtooth. So this one right there. And then what we want to do is we want to go and change this black to white. And then we want to change this white to another orangey color. Now you can experiment with your own colors. Um, maybe a darker color would be good. So that's looking pretty good, but you can play around with any of these colors. You know, maybe even the lighter that you go might be all right. But I'm just going to put in a value if you want to follow along F, F, 2, C, 2, C. And so that's more of a darkish kind of color. But I'm just going to press OK and I'm pretty happy with that. The last effect that I want to do is just add a fast box blur. So I'm just going to come over here, fast box blur, add that to the flame. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the radius to four. And then I'm just going to click that button. And I'm just going to make sure that the blur dimensions are only for the vertical. So you can see there, there's a bit of blur that's happening there and that's looking pretty nice. 
So the final thing that you will need to do is you just need to enable motion blur here and then we just need to enable it here as well. And that's pretty much it. So if you've done that correctly, you will see what that looks like here. So the flame kind of, you know, lights up and then it's got a nice kind of wiggle to it and it looks fairly realistic. But anyways guys, that is a very simple tutorial on how to create a flame using trap code particular. I hope you guys learned something. Stay tuned for the next tutorial where we'll take this flame and we'll actually, you know, use it with some footage behind it. But for now, this is part one of this tutorial. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.